Hi, this is Jared from Shuno, and today I want to talk about control joints in ARCHICAD and how to make them. So I've been writing some blog posts over on BIM Engine, I'll link to them in the description, and I've been talking about siding. And uh, mostly about lap siding, but in some of the images I've shown, you can see in the background, there are control joints, and um, I want to talk about how to do that in ARCHICAD. The trick, real simple, is going to be um, beams, columns, and building materials. So let's start with the building material side. What we need is a building material that will cut through other things. So I have solved this in ARCHICAD uh, by creating two different types of airspace building materials. Let me open up building materials and show you. So I have airspace and I have airspace overlap. The difference you can see is in their intersection priority. Regular airspace is intersection priority zero because everything beats air, right? In a game of rock, paper, scissors, air, air always loses. So you want, um, you want to have low priority. However, there are times where you want really strong air because you want to cut something, but you're cutting it with something invisible. You could do it with solid element operations, but that's, um, more to manage and has other complications. So what I've found is I've created a airspace that is invisible in plan and in section and elevation, or I guess it's technically visible in plan and section. I'll come back to that. But anyways, it's invisible, just like air, but is a very strong priority. In fact, if we show my priorities or show my building materials by priority, you can see regular airspace is the weakest. And airspace override is only beat by my ductwork building materials, which I want to win everywhere for other purposes. So there's the two building materials, and let me show you why that's cool. So here I have a mock-up of um, the building corner. And you notice here is the airspace running between the brick and the insulation, like you'd expect. Now this corner is something special. So we see we have... Uh, basically, say, a, um, a chase where there is no chipboard on the inside. How to do that's always been a challenge in ARCHICAD, but with the airspace override, it works beautifully because we've got that wall, got that wall, and then in the center where the chase is, I've placed a column with my override and set it to the size I want. So now in plan, this column overlaps the side or overlaps the chipboard and chipboard disappears so that looks perfect there's no having to cut the walls or do goofy things here it's just one wall one wall one wall column now if we look at this in 3d it's just as perfect now i could put this on a hidden layer in 3d if i needed to um, but it's invisible so it's there so let me just show you if i take that and i delete this invisible column there's the chipboard back. So there's the basic premise. It works beautifully, especially building materials now, showing everything just magic. Now let's apply this to control joints. So here we are, project. Um, and you can see that I have created nice control joints. And how that is done is, let me change my layer combination to all on, I have a beam or a column. That beam or column is on a hidden operator layer, so I can turn it off. Um, and it is set to a complex profile um, control joint. And let's edit the complex profile and just show you that real quick. So here's the complex profile, simple section, building material set to airspace override. And now there's a lot of things here that are going on which are awesome. To set up this grid, you simply place one column and one beam in space properly, in elevation, and then you go to a uh, whatever elevation you're working on. And then you can select 
the column and the beam, and you can just duplicate it at will. So now I've made a bunch more control joints. It's that easy. This is one of these things that now in ARCHICAD that you can um, copy 3D elements in section and elevation, this becomes a breeze. Before we could do that, this is would be burdensome, but because you can place one of a horizontal joint and a vertical joint on an elevation, get them sent into space, and then just go to town and just compose it like you would a 2D drawing, it's super easy. Now, the other nice thing about the um, using columns and beams is you can make the beams uh, sloped. I mean, you can make the column sloped as well, but because we can slope these things, we can match roof pitches, we can get kind of all the dynamics we need in the control joints. So that's the basics. One more reason why this is great and why it's good to use a complex profile is all of my control joints in this project um, are linked to the same complex profile. Let's hide them. As a reminder, you hide them, but the building material is cut, so you're basically just creating an negative space. It's beautiful. So here's my control joint uh, complex profile. If I decide that the control joints need to be larger for some reason or profiled, all I have to do is change the complex profile, hit store. Now we go back to, uh, not the elevation, that's hard to see. Let's go to the 3D model. There. Now all of my control joints have been updated. Uh, sorry about that. Um, all the control joints have been updated to match the complex profile. So I don't like that. I want them to be that. So we just update it. and go look at the elevation, and it's changed again. So this gives you a ton of flexibility to place control joints and um, then update them at will. Uh, so let's see. What else do I want to tell you? Um, let me just fix this. I think the other thing I want to talk about is that we'll just take a look at the renderings. Because there's one other solution to control joints, and I want to explain why you don't want to do that. So okay, that looks pretty. Let's look at some renderings I did beforehand. You can see there they are showing up. Awesome. And really, it might sound a little strange that we're placing each control joint individually with a beam that uses priority junctions to cut and then cut the wall and then you hide the beam or the column and make it invisible, but the cut remains. It might seem overdoing it, but if you're doing control joints, they're a design element and you have very specific goals for where you want to put them. So to be able to place them individually, I think, is a benefit. If you're curious about this wood siding over there, by the way, I've got an article talking about that. OK, so the other way to do control joints that I've seen is to use morph lines. Now, this works great because you're just um, you know, you're taking the morph, and then you're just drawing a line on the elevation. You know, it seems easy. It's great. Like, look, we just we just drew some control joints. Uh, of course, you could draw that stuff with beams and columns in 3D too. But it, anyways, it seems like it's a nice solution. There is a drawback to it. Let me jump to another file. Here's a project where I did this solution. I've got. I went through and I did all the um, stucco control joints with morph lines. It was it's kind of fun to do. It was pretty straightforward. Here's the problem. Um, Morph lines don't show up in renderings. So uh, here, here's a rendering of this project. This project was done in 17. It was not set up for renderings. So this is an ugly rendering on many levels. But the worst part about it is there's no control joints. You can see them down here because I did the, um, the, the invisible bean trick. And that, that works great here. Um, but the morph lines are invisible. Of course, if you do a sketch rendering, then the morph lines will show up, and that's great, but that's a limiting. So now that we come to this project, um, I'm reminded of two other things I want to show you. Something else that's really cool about the uh, control joint building material solution is that the control joints don't 
cut through objects, which means you can have these um, beams and columns run through windows, and it won't affect the windows because the windows don't aren't building material based, and so they won't engage in prior junctions. It's unfortunate because we want the objects to be building material based, but as it stands now, you can just run a control joint straight through a window, and it won't affect the window. That's neat. Um, there are drawbacks, of course. You want to be careful that you stop a control joint properly at um, the edge of another element, or we get a hole right through that. I think there's an example in this project. Um, oh, in an earlier phase there was, because I had control joints here, and they're running to the soffit, and uh, cutting holes where I didn't want them. I just patched it in 2D because it wasn't important for this project. Okay. One final thing, and then I will be done. Uh, for this system to work properly, uh, you need to give up on um, line weights. And by give up on line weights, I mean that you want to go to more uniform line weights throughout your elevations and sections. So here is the elevation of this, and there's a uniform light line weight for this elevation, and it works well. If instead we went with the old uh, uncut lines for a wall is thick, and we turn it from you know, 0.18 millimeters to something you might more typically see, uh, 0.35 or 0.5 millimeters for the uncut line of a wall, those control joints are going to get fat and ugly and nasty. So because of that, to make this work, you need to accept uh, lighter line weights throughout your elevations and let the detail of the project or sun shadows um, provide that added legibility, which I think is uh, definitely the way to go anyways because um, sun shadows are easy to do, um, they're automatic, they're based on the model, uh, and if you're modeling things like control joints, they'll cast shadows too, so you can get legibility that way. Well, that is all I have for today on control joints. I hope that makes sense. If you have questions, leave them in the comments, and um, we will talk to you later. Thank you very much.